Uh, hello everyone. So time is already two o'clock finish time and we are starting our webinar. Welcome. Uh, the webinar is visualization effects and storytelling organized by uh, project My Story along the Northern Lights route. My name is Natalia Pulaka and I'm the project manager at Lapland University of Applied Sciences, uh, Finland. So uh, most of you have been already attending our previous webinars and have been following the project activities. Uh, so if you, if you are new in our team, so just short introduction of the project. Uh, the project goal is uh, to provide support small scale tourism companies uh, located along the Northern Lights Road area. Uh, we provide support to become more visible um, by using uh, digital storytelling as a marketing tool. So one of the project activities are webinars, which are open for everyone, but also the webinars are a part of the support program for selected tourism companies. And uh, the aim of the webinars is to provide competence and knowledge for digital storytelling and marketing. And more information about the project and our activities, you always can find at our website, Northern Lights Route, um, northernlightsroute.info. And of course, uh, you can follow us uh, on social media channels. So today at the webinar, we have two uh, excellent experts. Um, as you can see from my presentation, uh, the first speech will take uh, Jako Heikkila. Uh, he's a photographer with a more than 30 years experience in photographing. And Jako has organized and participated um, uh, different exhibitions and he's uh, an author of uh, eight books. So uh, Jaco will tell stories about uh, Torneo River Valley and the culture of this area. After that, we will have a short uh, session with your questions and answers. And uh, then uh, Hanna Kalioniemi um, will, provide, will provide us some insight on why the visualization is important in storytelling and what uh, uh, you should take into account when you create visual materials and um, uh, how to design a, a high quality uh, materials. And of course, after that, uh, Hannah also will, will be ready to answer your questions. Uh, before we will start, uh, few also things to mention. So there is a chat box where you can communicate communicate uh, during the webinar and write your question there. So I will be following the chat box. Uh, and then uh, the webinar will be recording and um, it will be sent to your email address after the webinar ends. So um, you will be able to watch it again um, at any time. And also we would ask you after the webinar, we will send you the link um, of feedback survey. So we would like to uh, give us your, uh, to share us with your experience and thoughts about our webinars. And one also important thing that if you are on a tablet or mobile device, you will probably experience 50 seconds delay, but um, we will take it into account during the webinar. Uh, so yeah, let's start and uh, hopefully you will enjoy the webinar and you will learn uh, new things with us. So uh, Jako, the floor is yours. I Welcome. am here, I am here. Yes, we can hear you very well. Yeah. And now, I you can to... share, yeah, you can share uh, your presentation. It here. Mm -hmm. And then here. No. Uh, it's not ready there. 
Mm, it's like a sh uh, share button and then share a PDF presentation. Uh, wait. Mm. Share here. Is it this? Yeah. Mm. The PDF person base. But now yes. it gives this. It has to mm. load. Okay, let me see if I can help you. It has to wait. Use this media. Yeah, no. Yeah, good. Okay. Did you yeah. find it? <laughs> no. Yeah. Yes. So we can yeah, we can see. Yeah, we can welcome, see. Welcome, welcome. Um I am Jakko Heikla and uh, I I will speak about uh, I will speak about Thorne River Valley and uh, to try I'm trying to describe a kind of uh, um, kind of stories of of, of this area uh, uh, having the background. Uh, of, of of the history there and um, this view this this first first slide here it's a view from my close to my home over the over the river to Sweden um, now it is changing like this um, here is um, here is Katarina. Katarina is living uh, uh, in 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 uh, in Swedish Swedish side of uh, Tone River Valley, in a in a little 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 village called Parkalompolo. Um, I came. I came first visiting Katarina in uh, 1994, in October 1994, and uh, I had I uh, with with uh, with a preacher, uh, so-called uh, lay preacher Lasse, who was uh, the neighbor neighbor to Katarina, and we went in in in. In the middle of day in October, and uh, Lasse had something to to something to say to Katarina, and she was sitting with a blue shirt and and in 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 the kitchen table, and uh, looking looking out through the window. I was I was uh, next time. Uh, half uh, half a year from that in in, in April 1995 visiting visiting Parkalompolo and I thought I was there I thought I I will I will go to see Katarina uh, I want to see Katarina and uh, and uh, I stepped in and then uh, I saw on the left uh, we uh, coming coming in there, and then on, on the left there is a kitchen, and she was sitting just on the same place with the same shirt, looking out. Uh, half a year later, just the same view as as the first time, like like uh, repeating the same same view, and I asked her if I can take a photograph about her. When, when, because I didn't, didn't took, didn't take last time, and she said, "Yes, of course you can." I went close to her on on the other side of the table and uh, took my camera in front of my eyes, and she was sitting there just like she's sitting, and I was just uh, putting putting the camera, and. Uh, she said she was looking at me and and she said i was born in the forest i became a human it was very very touching touching situation it 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 those those words they were like like like, like a knife uh, uh, which which 
came inside to my heart and uh, and it's been like like the basis basis this meeting has been like a basis of my work after that the whole time katarina is in my mind and reminding these words uh, we will stay katarina is around here living here uh, close to Lainio, we will we will stay now here uh, on this area. Uh, Over Sopper is one place here, around here, and then then I my home is here in Kukkola, here, a little bit little bit north north from Tornio and Haparanda. Uh, this is own cultural area called Vorat Land, our land, Myanmar, and and uh, I started to work uh, here uh, nineteen actually beginning of of, uh, of nineteen ninety, like thirty years ago. There are certain things which which. Uh, which are the base of of, uh, of of this area? One is border. The border came first. Border came came 1909, 1809. It divided uh, villages and and uh, it divided actually it divided the same cultural area to to two countries. Uh, in that time, to Russia and Sweden. Uh, then later later to sweden and finland but the main thing is that there are there are the same same people same relative relatives uh, living on the both sides of 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 the river for example here in kukkola uh, i have relatives on the other side of, of the river in swedish side actually which is also someone some some people say it like like the west side of the river and we are in the east side of the river and this is this is own own area own own country uh, then the other other very very important thinking about this this cultural this culture is is Lestarius and he came to Karasuando 1826 <clears throat> he came from quickly in, in in sweden and he didn't speak speak uh Finnish. Uh, but but uh coming coming to karsuando he he figured out he discovered that it's it's useless to speak speak swedish there and then she got he got to learn english he got to learn Swe Finnish, and uh, and then then also uh, when the Lestadionism started to develop uh, it was because he 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 was kind of i see him very very kind of philosophical guy uh, who was worried 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 about about the people here uh, people were making spirits drinking drinking and 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 somehow destroying life and he he started to preach the way which is touching which is touching people and 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 i see i see his his role in that time kind of very very prosaistic so that very very uh, practical and prosaistic uh, somehow and then then uh, uh uh communism and 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 communistic party was was uh, forbidden in finland during the second world war and um, and uh, a kind of underground underground uh, propaganda was made from payala over the river to, to finland uh, both sides uh both sides uh here in north where in that time in 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 in, in the war time quite a left-wing 
communistic areas, also very much in Sweden. Uh, with these uh, these uh, kind of basic things, I started to to make the first my first book, dealing dealing uh, Tony River Valley, and I made it a lot. I made quite a, quite a lot uh, with Ben Bohelin, the writer, and uh, and he was he was kind of uh, why him, I I I got to know a lot of 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 of. Uh, culture and also I got to know a lot of people via, via Bengt. He, he was kind of uh, opening, uh, he, he opened this culture to me so that uh, quite quickly actually. And, uh, and this is, uh, this is the family from, from Bayala, from Kaimari Arabi. Here is the, 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 the summer party in Kitkiyoki, close to Payala. And this is the 1st of May fire in Swanstein. And then the other book, I continued this War at Land, Myanmar, Land of Howard. I continued with the second book, which is, which is quite a lot dealing uh, not dealing about less studios, but dealing, dealing about people growing up under the influence of less studios. Uh, these 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 people are not all in in religious, but they've been living in those those uh, villages where less studios. Uh, and less stadionism we are growing up and, and, and we are developing. Here is uh, so-called male Heike, post Heike, which is, uh, he is very hard, very hard preacher. Uh, 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 kind of uh, one of those preachers who were, who were preaching, preaching that time when, when when Lestadius was was uh, as a as a preacher, <clears throat> and then um, the third third book about dealing the Tona River Valley is is uh, dealing in my my home, Kukkola, and and uh, and actually the whole book is made made around. This Kukkolangoski, this this rapid. And uh, this is the view over the, over quite the quite early, early summer view over over the river to Sweden. And uh, and here is Swedish Swedish texts. Uh, the rapid is, is a great thing. It's like paradise in the world, something like that. And uh, during this this presentation we I have I have little little breaks with with uh, with the river view. Uh, Landscapes, landscapes from the river, about the river, dealing the river. Yeah, here is here is um, uh, Kalle, Kalle Kalama, and he is he is he um, standing here, and he's standing st standing here in the quite same same bank river bank as in the first 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 picture and he was he was one of those um, uh, uh, transporting making the underground underground propaganda to finland 
during the Second World War. And he, for example, he brought, he, he transported over the river the printing machine to, to the Finland. And they were printing in a forest, Finnish forest, a propaganda, propaganda leaflet called Pitcha, like Kyhky, like dough. And, um, and it was, it was led by, led by a Swedish Communist Party, uh, like from, from Stockholm to, to Payala and over the river from Payala to, to Finland. And the same time, which is so typical uh, in Torna River Valley, the same time uh, he was in 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 deep religious. He he was trusted. He was he trusted to Lestadianism, and and he was Christian. And uh, here are sitting Kalle and Kertu. Kalle is actually uh, first communist and left-wing guy, very hard, very, very, very fanatic. And, and at the same time, he is, he is uh, in deep religious, in, 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 has a deep faith to Lestadionism. Kertu is first, he is first, she's first, she's wife, she's first, let's start doing this. She's hard, deep, uh, uh, trusting to the less studies. And the second is, 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 is the communism. And they are living together. And, and uh, I once, once I, 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 I was sleeping in, in the, in, in, in the yard of, of Kalle and Kertu, making making the first book, and I woke woke up early, you know, in the in the yard cottage of, of, uh, of them. I woke up early in early morning. Uh, it was it was uh, like like uh, April sun coming through the window and just touching the Lenin sculpture of Lenin in 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 in. Payala. And that's something which is, uh, uh, which is a kind of funny thing. I, I, I feel like that. So that, that uh, atheism, atheism is the same time, uh, a kind of religious thing, like, like, like a Christian faith or, or trust to Christianism. A river. Uh, here is Leonard. Leonard is is Leonard with his wife in in Kitkiyoki, uh, north north from Payala. Leonard is is uh, is uh, very interested about all kind of literature, and uh, I was showing him him the new dictionary of uh, of uh, of Torna River Valley which was just published when I when I was visiting them and he said he said that yes this is good this is nice what we got to do uh, own dictionary we got to do the own dictionary for the for the every village the the dialect is so different uh, different depending on uh, where you are, in, in which village you are. But then, then uh, I didn't know when I took this picture that she, the wife, she was uh, she had a cancer. And uh, and uh, then uh, this is this picture is made in 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 November. And then uh, in. In um, in January, in February, uh, I found it's, it's a pity I didn't <laughs> didn't took a picture, but I found in 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 uh, Norlenska Norlenska Social Democrat NSD, the, the newspaper in Lule, uh, uh, 
Leonard was was made made a, 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 how it is called apit or 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 Christian in Christian form uh, apit in Christian form that. She died in deep eternal trust to socialistic labor movement's future. So, uh, her, his wife died, has died, and then she, he was he was in the next summer. Of course, he was alone, and and I found a Christian Christian uh, uh, Abed, uh, uh and and. Uh, and made made by by Leonard about her life about his wife. Totally, totally, uh, kind of absurd, unrealistic, but so nice. Uh, Christian, Christian. Uh, Christian way of 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 saying the trust of his wife. And the river around Everturnia and Pekka. Pekka's room is called heaven. I heard it from the neighbors in in Kitkiyoki that when you go to Pekka uh, ask if 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 he will he will show you uh, his heaven uh, Pekka lives lives uh, is living with 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 um, with Reio, uh, in in Kitkiyoki and Reio comes from from Mikkeli in Finland. Uh, but Reyo didn't want to be photographed. So Pekka is here on the door to the heaven. And then I said I said to him that yes, let me go, let me let me come in. Of course you have to show me your heaven. And 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 then then he took me in in here and uh, it was really kind of a nice, nice room. A little bit romantic. There is a wall clocks, romantic wall wall clocks there. Uh, mother and father here. Uh, beautiful room, really beautiful room. Uh, and uh, here, for example, here is here is uh, the Finnish map on 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 the sofa here. Uh, it's a Finnish map in 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 Swedish yellow. <laughs> funny funny detail. Uh, on on the left here is a is a is a blue table with with uh, showing showing machine. And Pekka is making making showing uh, clothes, making things. There are wire wire rolls. Uh, on on the table there, and uh, and the sun, sun shining through the through the table inside. Pekka call me calls me uh, to to see the landscape uh, outside the window, and uh, then. He shows me that look, look there, there is a Mikko. Mikko. Mikko is a, is a, is a, a lamp, or is it? Is this this uh, this is a ram? And we go down from from the room to Mikko. Mikko is 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 is. He and uh, he is standing. Mikko is standing on the snow there. Sun is shining, and uh, Pekka takes from his pocket. He he takes a bag of 
yellow yellow cigarette uh, yellow 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 uh, blend blend cigarettes Swedish cigarettes and he he make it burns he he take one 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 start to smoke it and then he kills the cigarette to Mikko to the ram and uh, Mikko is smoking and he smokes like so that the smoke is coming from the nose here it's 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 difficult to see it in in a picture because it's sunny and and but the smoke is coming here and he smokes the ram is smoking the whole cigarette uh, then the the <laughs> the the Mika star to make like this, like this, uh, so that. Mm -hmm. And Pekka says says to me that look, look, he's 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 uh, Mikko is total total nicotinist. He could smoke the whole pack of yellow blend. And and uh, and uh, then <laughs> then we <laughs> we left left he didn't give give the second cigarette leave we left Mikko but Pekka was repeating to me that Mikko Mikko he is he is he is he is he is a nicotinist I am a little bit afraid he's smoking too much and here is river And uh, close to Mikko and Pekka and Reo is is living Elsa, also in in Kitkia Joki, north from Pajala. Uh, I come to Elsa Elsa after meeting Pekka and Mikko, and I come in there. Uh, and asking, actually, I was asking the, the another place to go, but I just came to to check, just very very accidentally, uh, in there, and and uh, Elsa was speaking, and he spoke, and she spoke, and she spoke, and she spoke about all the neighbors, and I I stayed there, I I, I was thinking I will I will I will listen to her. And uh, and uh, she was telling how she is she is taking care of flowers, what she is planned, what 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 what, what, what which kind of vegetables she is doing during the summer, which kind of uh, year of the different berries was last summer, uh, all kind of all kind of things, which kind of neighbor uh, she had. I, I said that I visited Mikko and Pekka. She, uh, Reijo and Mikko and Pekka. She said that that's a nice place. They are so so nice people, and and uh, and then suddenly, she proposed to me that could be could be it. I could make make a make a sausage supper. And um, and I said, of course we can eat. Yes, yes, yes. Sure, it's 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 um, it's good. And uh, then she was she was making the soup. By soup, soup is coming on 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 in in the kitchen there. And uh, then suddenly she said to me that I can't tell it to you. Uh, but it's 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 set in. In, in Finnish and Swedish television, but I can't tell it to you. I said that of course you you can tell you can you can say it and tell it. Uh, I don't tell to to anyone anyone that. And he and she said no no I can't I can't tell it to you. I said to him, her that uh, no no just tell tell it to me that uh, uh, I am I am totally quiet I don't I don't. I don't tell it. Then, then she came, came to me like that, and she said that Jesus was homosexual. 
Have you heard about that? It's been told in both televisions, in Finnish and Swedish television. And 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 I I I, I was some, somehow you know the situation is that that uh, that it makes me you know, that I I said that of course she she was of course it's it's good and and, and but the the situation is somehow so unrealistic somehow uh, so nice. And, and somehow something to enjoy, just like, like, in the neighbor with Mikko and Pekka, smoking, smoking lab, and then close to that, that, and then after these two things, I I just thought that which kind of world I am living in, this is this is full of full of absolute beautiful things. And here is river. Uh, this is the Lestadius cottage in in Parcalombolo for for having ceremonies ceremonies Lestadius ceremonies there. Uh, here is Erland. Uh, Erland was eleven years. He was listening to priest. He was listening to ceremony, and uh, and uh, suddenly he he uh, he had pain in his stomach. He had difficult to sit there, and uh, the priest was keeping the ceremony, and suddenly, suddenly, Ellen. Uh, uh, Erland uh, low, uh, lost uh, from her from him a uh, very hard noise flatus like phew and the priest priest uh, stopped the ceremony and said to Erland, Erland, you got to go out. Just go out for having the same there. And uh, Erland was 11, he went and he saw like all the people around, all the old people around were watching him and he closed the outdoor and uh, he said that that was the moment I lost my faith. And the river. Emil. Emil is living in Vikusjärvi, uh, close, quite close to Övre Sopera and Karesuando. Emil has a lot of reindeers in, in, in his yard. They are like hundreds of, of, of reindeers and they are very he he knows every one of them he's speaking to them he's he he has names of them he can clap his hand on the back of this and saying that esco how are you or 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 sir and how how is your situation uh, one morning one reindeer calf was was a uh, just newborn radiant reindeer calf didn't get in in the feeds he was he was sick and uh, and uh, the mother was really worried about that and uh, Emil was thinking how what I am doing what I could do here, what I could he do now, how to get, 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 uh, get it uh, uh, healthy again. And then he decided to take it in over the night. 
and he took him to calf, he took him to his armpit and slept over the night with with the calf, with the reindeer calf. And in the morning he was jumping on his own feet. And uh, Emil Emil thought that I was I was uh, I was healing healing it with with my own warmth. And here is here is the the reindeer reindeer on his on its feet. A uh, brother of Emil uh, take the morning morning nap morning nap after the same morning I was I was I was photographing those reindeers. I saw that he is he is coming uh, with a snow scooter uh, from somewhere, and I went in for asking it, and he he just. Uh, said that I am very tired. I, 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 I've been driving the whole night. And he had been rowing uh, like two hours on, on, on the frozen on the frozen snow in the middle of night, just go, going to, to the hill, close hill on the border to, to Finland. And uh, he saw how the morning sun was rising from Finland. He was he was thinking that how beautiful, how beautiful Finland is. And then he drove back home. He was trying like four hours just for, for coming to see the sun rising from Finland. And the river. And here is Len Lennart. Uh, Lennart, uh, uh, is not alone. Uh, he is, he is uh, showing me his his yard and the riverside. And uh, here, he is knocking this birch, this tree, and from here comes a golden eye flying from from this this net. The flying golden eye comes out and he said to me, you see, I am not alone. Then he, we go here for seeing the view to, to Torni River, the view uh, to Payala. This is, this is Kengis, a little bit south from Payala. And then the Eli is swinging, swimming over the night here, over the river here. And uh, and with with uh, just with with uh, very big horns, which are which are like waving in the river. The horn is 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 uh, swimming over here. And he said again that I am not alone. You see, I am not alone here. Then we come in, and he's sitting, sitting. In, in his everyday room and uh, here's a paradise uh, and it's it's a nice stick a little bit nice stick nice room and uh, and he said to me that next time when you come uh, you may come if you have a wife to me you don't don't come without wife to me and and uh, and i haven't i haven't uh, i haven't uh, filled his his hope uh, a year ago i was i was visiting here for 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 seeing Leonard, but he the the house was empty And the river. And here is uh, here is Kuliki. 
uh, Kylikki lives in Ylitornio in Finnish side. He is also, she's also very, very kind of romantic, uh, very beautiful home with paintings, with dolls, which, which uh, she is, she is collecting, and uh, this is brought from, uh, from Florida, from USA. Uh, and you see everything is is uh, everything is um, is uh, big in in USA everything is is uh, large everything is big and uh, when when peeing in in market in market store uh, uh, she has she has those those trolleys shopping trolleys which are very large very big ones and um, she hurts she hurts when when people are somehow somehow um, touching each other with those those uh, market 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 uh, uh, shopping shopping carts uh, shopping trolleys uh she hears that they will they they say to each other they always that that kiss me uh, Kulik heard it is hearing it like kiss me and uh, and then uh, he she said that she always when when she was with those those trolleys she was always saying that kiss me just kiss me and then she always, she always, uh, the way opened to him, and people were 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 going away from 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 that that from from her way. Uh, she was like saying, "Kiss me." It's something like like excuse me. And we come to to Kukkolan, Kukkolan Koski and uh, deep netting is is uh, a long long lasting uh, uh, cultural tradition which is here um, and deep netting whitefish. And Hannes has has the value of uh, he has he has he is he is a counselor of deep netting, very skillful, very good, very nice to get get fishes. Um, and um, he's doing this like over the summer, the whole summer. Often. The tourists they come to ask Hannes that how it is possible, how do you can get so so a lot of whitefish? What is your secret for that? How 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 you can do it so well? How you can catch catch so much? And uh, Hannes used to say that he he have a soccer, he have a soccer here piece of soccer here in the net and the fishes come and and he 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 gets them then he he's laughing like 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 very hard like that <laughs> and then i was once once uh, listening him when he told about two two women that you have to come at at seven o'clock to see this this uh, dividing of of whitefish and it's a yard there on the background on on on, on the background of of this 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 um this area and and just come there around seven in the evening and um and there then this is set by hannes there you can see the main 
prim principal things, the main basis things of of uh, of socialism. There, people are dividing fishes so long, so so long time that no one gets anything. Yeah. Jesus stands on the Swedish side. When uh, I was, I was five or six years old. old uh, I got from my mother a kind of storybook where there was stories, fairy tales, and and aquarels painting, aquarel paintings, and uh, and I was sitting on 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 the floor at my home and looking at the new book and in one picture in one one aquarel there was Jesus Jesus standing on the beach on 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 the other side and uh, and uh, there was water in front and Jesus standing there on the background and uh, I was shouting to my mother and mother, mother, Jesus is standing on the Swedish side. Thank you very much. This was my my story about Tony River Valley. Thank you, Jaco. Thank you very much. Very uh, beautiful and nice looking photos and interesting stories about this area so let's see if uh, we have any comments yes thank you uh thank you johanna Yemina, and Ritva. uh yeah i hope you liked it if you have any question um you can write in the chat box uh well while we are waiting uh actually i have one question is um uh, uh I don't know. Could you do you have some tips, advices on taking photos, uh, which would make a story more vivid? Sorry. How to? Um, could you do you have some tips or advices? Some tips. Some tips. tips. Yes, on yeah. taking uh, photos, which would uh, make the story. Uh, like more deeper more to deeper. yeah the, the the picture would take the story to the audience and to make the story more live more vivid yeah that's 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 uh, it's not uh, i think there is there is no no uh, there is no um, no no certain uh, uh, it's 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 something which is very very. Uh, I have to say it's something which is difficult. It's difficult to to. I I think the main thing is uh, to listen and then to have a kind of uh, uh, balance situation to listen and and uh, and uh, and. And you and me, or you as a, as a, as a as a collector, or or as collecting stories or photographing stories, you have to have time, and also those people you are you are with, they have to have time. There is something which is, for example, no, most of the work I have done, it's it's been sitting in the kitchens. And and uh, and um, and listening, sitting and listening, and and then photographing. When when uh, as a photographer, you have to have very very sensitive mind the whole time, like like sensitive things up here. How to how to how to make make the story and and the and the picture and the image to work together. And for example, here in my presentation, in this, I have 
in many, 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 in many, uh, uh, for example, now when 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 showing to Leonard, who who was not alone, I just figured out again that I I should have the picture about about uh, the about the, the 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 golden eye coming 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 out from from the nail, and and uh, many many of those are like. Like I feel that I should have photographed better. <laughs> I, I have listened to those stories, but 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 I have like like forgotten to photograph better. Yeah, it's very mm. very personal how to how to make make it more vivid. Mm. Mm. Okay. Very... Yes. Thank you. And you was right. No, in your last just uh, to sit down and listen and uh, listen yourself and listen what's going around um yeah that's true so yeah that is uh comments uh, uh thank you for the stories about the people and from petra yes uh, the photos uh, took us almost inside the persons so okay and then uh um, um, yeah, there is a question from Ritva. Uh, do you take photos of children? That is a delicate thing. Still, children love stories. Oh yes, yes. This is this is this is of course. This is only only now now when when um, I I just uh, I just uh, uh, ended up. To these situations, which which in in Dona River Valley, so that people were home, and 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 I ended up to 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 a little bit older people who had time, and 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 that's the reason this is quite quite about dealing about old people, is these stories. But of course, it's been it's been um, all ages and all all and children are very very fascinating to to photograph mm. yeah mm. thank you Jaco. uh i believe there is no any questions no any more questions but uh many comments to your presentation so thank you a lot that you thank came you. today to our webinar and shared with us these yeah. marvelous stories and photos, images. So um, the next, the next uh, turn um, is um, Hannes. Hello, Hanna. Can you hear us? Yes. Hello. So yeah, I can see that you already started the sharing your presentation. Uh, yeah. Yes. So welcome She's and. You can start. Thank you. And and first of all, thank you, Jaco. I, I almost feel sorry that I have to drag you away from from this beautiful storytelling and um and kind of a uh what could it be soul breaking uh stories that we just heard. So uh, now we are actually going into into more business aspect of the of the storytelling. And um we had agreed already before with Jaco that he will take you for a journey and uh, and then I will take you back to the reality. Yeah, so, uh, so fe feeling sorry for it already <laughs> because the atmosphere started to be more religious or, or spiritual here and now I'm, mm -hmm. I'm taking the um, more rougher kind of a stand here. So sorry, sorry for it. Um, so first of all, um, Thank you, Natalia, and and the team for inviting me. I, I saw already that in the in the audience there are some people that I know, and uh, good to meet you all. My name is Hanna Kallioniemi, and uh, I live in Espoo, but I have been working uh, for for the past two years in the Tornio Valley area, uh, mostly in Enontekiö area, and uh, but I, I live in in the south, unfortunately. Um, the presentation that I walk you through is um, partially related to the Tornio River Valley as well, but it's um, 
it's more into the the aspects of the how to tell the tell the story what are the main requisitions that has to be taken into account and um and with that um and maybe some background a bit further so nlux northern luxury that i'm representing here um is a, uh right now it's a consultancy agency in the future it's going to be also a sales platform that we are focused on on helping people how to uh, illustrate how to visualize um, their business and um, and their brand so um first let's let's go through a couple of um friends and uh, what are the facts behind so um you probably all have noticed that people are busier they don't pay, pay attention their span of attention is, is getting really short and and that leads into the fact that you need to represent yourself in pictures otherwise you're not going to get heard um they they are really really you, you only have like a couple of seconds or milliseconds to actually get their attention um if you don't have the visuals uh you won't get heard um the text is only read uh maybe on the website only 20 percent but all the pictures are going to be browsed and over here for instance we have an example from um Gülmama, Lappe Lohi, and and their future website but how do you pay attention to the to the pictures um also 90 percent of the purchasing decisions are made by by visual elements um then the whole consumption of the visual um also also in social media is uh, is growing really heavily you all know that in um in different social media channels like um like in instagram or in pinterest TikTok, snapchat uh whatever it is facebook for us older people here so everything is about the visual it hardly ever you you read the text unless you're really a, a blogger or um or influencer and then there might be also some some people reading the, the long texts but basically these user amounts are are huge and uh, to get your stuff through you need to have very strong visuals also about the branding so uh brand is something that that people you, you don't really see it you have to feel and experience it and uh, everybody's creating their own kind of a feeling of the of the brand you you can create your own colors you can create your maybe some other visuals but in the end it's the feeling and and how people are experiencing it and um and more importantly it's about the also a multi-sensory uh experience that if you can bring their colors and and uh smell or, or senses and um or sense and um and and the, for instance how does something feel like touching it so that gives already the stronger feeling of your brand so how do we deal with this and how do we make it more tangible and and let's not make it too too complex either so we we are talking about the hospitality elements and if there are people who who have their businesses over here either you're focused on on how do you stay how do you where do you sleep uh what are you eating what do you do in that place maybe there are some activity providers that just focus on on the do side how do you relax what are the things that you might be able to shop in that place and what are the events that your hospitality um whether it's a venue um it's a hotel or or just your little um i don't know um what do you call them uh safari house for instance what what can you organize over there and how do you illustrate it that that to your customer and in our world meaning the nlux kind of a concept that we are talking about here is that first of all you have to define that what kind of style do you have what's your now we have an example here of the cabin life it could be a rural farmer house it could be heritage manor it could be something else that you define how do you combine these hospitality elements how do you find also the seasons and the seasonality and then you bring these different reasons to come 
And this is where you actually can start telling stories like Jakob was describing earlier, that with one picture, you give a reason to your customer why to, why to visit your place. It can be a chef's night with a horseback riding in the wilderness cabin. Um, and with this picture, you naturally give something which is a fairy tale, but it might be the moment when the customer falls in love and thinks that, oh my God, I have to go there. Um, it can be something a bit simpler, a yoga retreat in a rural farmhouse, and you just paint the, the feeling with the, with the illustrations or with the pictures or photos to your customer, and they, they fall in love. Or it could be a, a summer weekend in a heritage manner, and, and once again, very different kind of a style and a feeling with the colors, and how do you play with them. So what we are doing here is, is designing feelings. What you need to do with your customer is to design feelings. That how do you how do you lead your customer into the into the moment when they feel that I must go and I must book. And this is the moment when they book or press the booking button. And and we took as an example here. Um, this is Gran Kula that my colleague Marika actually owned earlier, and um, and they collected feedback from the customers and, and asked that, okay, what are the feelings that, oh, what does it mean for you? And it wasn't, we were not asking that what are the feelings, but the, the responses were that how do they feel? So it wasn't necessarily only by, okay, you had nice slippers or uh, the doorknob was beautiful or, um, so these technical features are not, not in, a, uh, in a key position here. It's more about more about the how did how did the place make you feel, and that's what we want to deliver to the customers. That how do they feel when they open your door? How do they feel when they sit down in the sauna lobby, for instance? How do they feel when they go for a husky ride? What are the elements that are built around it? And uh, and that's where the customer feedback and uh, and the customers' feelings are leading your way. So what needs to be done? So what are the things that you, you should take into action when you start to build your story? Um, first of all, it's important to define yourself. So what are the differentiation uh, points? How do you uh, differentiate from your competitors? Um, what are your unique selling points? This is something that everybody's talking about. It might sound very theoretical, but just look at yourself that where do you want to go? Where, where are you standing right now? And, and it's good to keep it real and authentic. Fake doesn't work. So you have to be very, um, even though it would be very rural for instance, or um, maybe even a word too authentic or, um, or rough, raw, it might be really good. And, uh, the new luxury comes actually from this, like a real experiences. So you don't have to worry about being too neat or clean or or something else. I mean, it's tidy is another thing. So of course it should be nice setup, but it doesn't need to be polished. It can be a little bit rough, and that makes the the feeling better. Um, you also need to define your audience. If you want to have fishermen in your place, probably not the best idea to put these pink uh, nails on the picture or vice versa. So if you want to have a yoga retreat uh, visitors, uh, rough fishermen pictures are probably not the ones, or you can combine and you can attract different kind of audiences. Also focus on, on storytelling, like Jaco was describing earlier. So pictures are still telling a story if your pictures, your um, images are matching, they will tell a story as well. This one, for instance, is an example from um, Eastern side of Finland, Bukarin uh, Pysäkki. And there, these pictures already give an idea that, okay, they are focused on food. They have very traditional buildings over there. They also focused on, on heritage because the lady over here is, is actually playing um, what is that in? I don't know what that in, is in a uh, harp or, or something, the traditional ka kantele in Finnish. So 
with a couple of pictures, you can tell already that what is it all about? Why would you go there? And if you like this, you will click the button. Um, this one over here is uh, uh, Arctic Land Adventure, uh, four glass igloos in, in Kilpisjärvi. So with these pictures, you tell already a story that, oh my God, I can go and see the, the reindeer. I can sit in the middle of them and I will be living in this little hut uh, with a view to the mountains. A couple of pictures and you know already that why would you like to go there? Um, in different channels, and now by channels, we naturally talk about the social media channels, um, your website, your whatever other vehicles you're using. So try to keep it consistent. And this one is from um, another customer in, in Ruka, um, Isoken Kasten Klubi. And, uh, and they were wondering that what's, their, what's the glue? And uh, it pretty quickly became that, okay, red. It's red. It's a uh, the red string in Finnish words is also meaning the the kind of the uh, the, the focus of, of things what you're doing. In their case, the red became actually the real uh, red core. And um, and when you put all of this together, you will get also streamlined kind of the way of of talking into into different channels. Um, my recommendation would be that, for instance, if, if you don't want to have too polished uh, Instagram feed, so use the stories. So in the story section, you can go wilder or more like a hands-on daily day life. If you want to make sure that your customers get the, the best of feeling of your Instagram, because nowadays before they even travel over, they will look into your Instagram feed and your fe uh, Facebook, even before they go on your website. And if all of these are giving kind of like a confused messaging, they're not sure what's real. So try to keep it consistent. Um, then one very important thing, the scenery. So this one, for instance, here we go again. I, I can see the Jesus on the other side. Um, this is from Lappelohi in uh, Tornio Valley. And uh, I'm, I'm overlooking towards Sweden. But the scenery over there is, is telling already a story. Immediately when you see this one, it's like, a, oh my God, I have to go. And, uh, and the picture was taken by Ina, who's actually joining this, this um, uh, seminar as well. Such a beautiful uh, colors and, uh, and a moment. And that tells you already that you, you feel like I must go when you see this naturally, this is very pink, maybe very female, maybe a fisherman wouldn't be thinking the same way. Uh, for somebody who's looking for a yoga retreat, this might work. But let's offer a customer um, the possibility to, to experience the, the kind of like the, the scenery, the, where would they go, give enough kind of space for, for explaining them that why would they want to go to that place. Um, Likewise, uh, colors, so strong colors. It might be also pale colors. I think Jaco had very, very nice uh, river pictures earlier that they felt like the river is always very calm, uh, even though it's not real, but it's um, it was a calming element. Over here, now it's a very strong element, very, very strong contradicting cost, uh, colors, but you probably will remember this kind of a colorful picture. Then food. How do you how do you show what kind of food you're offering um, on your location? Uh, taking pictures of the of the food is is super difficult. Um, it's it's very hard. And earlier uh, Natalia was asking that how do you um, what kind of instructions would be given to to taking pictures of the food? It's even for, for the photographers, professional photographers, it might be really challenging. So this requires not only the, um, the photographer skills, but it requires also a vision that how do you set up the table? How do you uh, take different elements? It's a different story to t just have a um, salmon here than having it decorated or on a certain kind of a paper, on a certain kind of a platform. So it's a combination of different things. It's not just a picture. It's it's a it's a lot of work behind, and I'll, I'll come back to this a bit later. Um, 
also the details. So if you have nice details in in your place, in in your location, whatever is the the business that you're driving, pay attention to the to the details. Uh, customers are paying attention to those details as well. And and as I said before, it doesn't need to be polished. It can be a bit raw and rough. It makes it more authentic. Also, what are the sounds that you're offering? Um, I remember going for the first time to um, um, Loma Vietonen uh, on the Finnish side, and uh, and it was really important for for the owner that when you enter the living room or to the um, what was it the the main building anyway. So it, it's important that the fireplace is always on, and that makes the feeling. It makes the sound. It makes the the smell. It makes the the atmosphere. And, uh, and that makes also the customer to remember that, oh, that was a nice place that they always had the fireplace on. Likewise, as I said about the, the scents, so the, the smells that you can experience, it's a multi-sense um, multi approach and, uh, and it will remain a lot longer in people's minds. Actually, on, on, online, you can't do this. Lightning. Um, it's totally a different thing than um, having a candlelight or dim lightning or a bit darker room than having the normal school building um, lamps, for instance, that are really, really um, kind of like a, a eye breaking. And, um, and this makes also the, the feeling. It depends what you, you're trying to, to achieve. But from the customer point of view, if you think about that you have the electricity lightning, for instance, over dinner, or when you have a candle lightning, that kind of a way how people talk to each other is changing. And there has been some studies on this already. So making people more intimate works with the candle lightning, for instance. If you don't want to have that, so then, then very uh, high um, volumes of light might, might be good, but it doesn't make that the atmosphere um, intimate or or kind of a quiet in a way. So in short, uh, one thing to keep in mind, um, let's make sure that the message you're sending to your customer is, is corresponding to the reality. Um, on the other hand, two realities is not necessary either. You, you can't be faking, but maybe some creativity, imagination, uh, some maybe fairy tale aspect, uh, adding some feelings on it, some um, setting, like for instance, this one is from Hawk Hill Nature in, in Espo. So their example, they, they have set up the tables, they, they've add people in the pictures, they, um, they are using also the uh, neighboring um, scenery and, uh, and giving an idea that this is how, how it looks like when you come to our place. And, uh, and in, in, at one glimpse or in a collection of, a, of a pictures, you get the feeling that, okay, this is, this is what I'll get when I go there, whether in summer or in, in winter. Then um, let's have a little reality check and uh, let's go through one, one customer example that I mentioned already before. And we've seen already the pink color indicates that this is the Tornio River. Um, Lappea Lohi um, is located in Lappea. I'm not sure if everybody, know, everybody knows where it is, about 30 kilometers south from Kolari. And um, they approached us asking for help to turn their uh, salmon fishing place. It's a very fa famous salmon fishing place during the uh, summertime. But they are basically empty to, during the winter time. There is nothing going on. Maybe some random people uh, passing by but never a group. They don't have their own uh, toilets and bathrooms. They don't, um, they're not favored by the uh, um, travel organizers because of the fact that it's, it's more like an old school where um, people don't have their privacy, but you have to share uh, bathrooms and, and toilets. So, so it's been challenging. And, um, and then we started to think that, okay, so what are the target audiences that might work for, for this place? 
because if, it, if it's not going to be a luxury travelers, so what, what could they be? And we ended up with a couple of different aspects and one of them is now um, these yoga travelers or well-being travelers, even uh, fit that might be coming by themselves and they just want to stay there, relax, do nothing and, uh, and, and stay calm and, and in, a, in a silence. And this is really a good place because it's far away from everything, especially for a foreigner. And uh, before Corona started, there started to be already people who came there for a couple of nights um, from Japan, from uh, from the eastern side of the world, and they did nothing. They they just slept because it's quiet and and sweet and and so on. And then the river is is running next to it. So now I'll I'll show you a couple of things that we um, we did there, and just by photographing it differently. Um, so first of all, like we, we also spoke already about Isokenkasten Klubi, where we chose the color red as their core color. So over here in Lappe, it's, it's blue. It's, uh, it has been painted in blue. The buildings are blue, uh, the walls are blue, and it might be sometimes a little bit even shocking, but how do we make it work for, for the um, photographing as well? So. Now, by combining different and bringing the color into life in other places as well, not just on the walls, but also using it as a, as a brand color on the pictures, it, it gives you opportunities how you can soften it up a bit. Um, also, matching different colors. So if the blue is their main color, so what else can we bring there? And, um, and then we brought some kind of like a warmer colors to soften it up. And also the elements that are typical, uh, the knives and the cooks and, and then they have a lot of these rugs on the walls. So different colors and, and by using these elements, you can bring the, the feeling of the place. Also on the website, for instance, a lot more tangible to your customer or in, in social media. And, um, and here you can even feel already that the, how does the rug feel? And these rugs are actually on the wall, and those were originally um, or originated from from the uh, school times, and now now in, in reuse. Um, then mixing and matching. So uh, once again, one of the rugs has been used over here. Then in the middle, we have a picture that is actually stolen from Ina. Thank you, Ina, once again. Um, so. You can imagine that, okay, sometimes you just use, for instance, food pictures. But here we bring everything together. It gives you kind of a more um, lifestyle aspect that, yes, you have food, then you have the reindeer, then you have the rug, but it's it's not about the how do you combine it, it's about the colors, so how do they match with it, each other. And, uh, and it gives you more like a stronger feeling of the place and an idea that even though you wouldn't maybe even see the, the reindeer in Lappe, but it gives an idea that, okay, yes, I'm going to Lapland. So that's that's one of the elements. Um, very crucial. So by choosing the, just the angle, that how do you take the picture? And this is now going back to the question that Natalia had earlier. So maybe these are the tips that um, we can give. Um, make it softer. So just having the building itself as a raw might give a very plain or, or cold kind of a view. And then when you add something in front, well, of course, we didn't build it up, but you take the angle and you, you see that, okay, they are, even though this is in winter, but it tells the story that, yes, they have boats and the boats are used for salmon fishing. And uh, they do have old fashioned kind of a huts also in the area. And then the main building is behind there. It gives already a lot more layers to the story. And in one picture, you can you can already tell about the feeling of Lappe Alohi. Um, then how do you create atmosphere? So exactly the same place, different kind of a styling, different kind of a, um, of course, the other one hasn't been styled at all and there is a bad lighting and everything. So kind of a, um, dramatic um, 
comparison here, but with a couple of little things, how, how can you make it more cozier? How can you make it, um, how can you add the feeling once again and make your customer to feel that, oh, this is a lovely place. I want to go to this smoke sauna. And, uh, and then you get the, the customer once again to fall in love. The same goes for uh, when you're taking pictures of, of the, um, uh, your hotel rooms, for instance, or, or whatever is your, your own location, add people, add their other elements. Um, and we call it like a design and lifestyle thinking, where in the same picture of the room, you can already show, for instance, what are the, what are the products that you're selling in your place? What are the other things that, what are the things that you can do there? Um, why would somebody want to stay at your place? Of course, now this is, these are two different rooms here. So this specific room, for instance, where the person is standing, it's, it's already a lot more decorated. So once again, a little bit um, over exaggerated example, but very rare times um, in hotel pictures, there are people and uh, then it doesn't give you an idea that why would I go there? Why, why, one, why do I want to be there? And uh, let's give a reason for, for the customers. Um, and also here at People, so the same place, but now Heikki uh, here reading a book, having a little drink in the hand, even a Christmas present. So a totally different kind of a feeling of the same place. And, and then the person who comes over here might think that, oh, when I go there, I'll, I'll be sitting down there as well. And, uh, and reading a book. And then I've men mentioned this already a couple of times to give a reason. So here are um, comparison of the, of the uh, restaurant and then the restaurant when it was kind of set up for the photo shoot. And of course, the, co the reality has to, has to match. So Right now, this is how La Pellohi uh, restaurant looks like on the left-hand side. But in the future, as soon as we are finished up with the project, it will look like this. And, uh, and also with the lightning. Of course, in summertime, it's going to be a bit different. But the idea is that this is what we are targeting. And sometimes with these photo shoots, you can even start um, going a bit wild. And, and then once, once you see in the, in the pictures, then you can start thinking that, okay, this is what I want to have in the reality as well. So it's both ways. Um, but going back, we don't want to be fake. Um, the reality has to match. But with an angle, how do you take the picture? How do you set up the table? How do you um, decorate light, add lightning uh, or remo remove lightning? Um, that, will, that will help. And so as a, as a wrap up, um, let your customers to fall in love with your place. Let your customers to, to feel it. It's really about the feeling. It's not about just having a, um, empty pictures in, as such. So it's, it's more about adding, adding something that makes them um, really push the button uh, book and, uh, and really like it. Um, I'm just a talking head here in a way. So Marika Gulman, my colleague, uh, she's behind of uh, collecting these pictures. Um, these photos are partially, so as I mentioned, Ina already, uh, she has been taking a lot of these pictures. There are a combination of um, um, photographers that we are using also, but then we, we are also using some um, uh, photo or the bank, what do you call them? Banks, the um, galleries that you can you can buy pictures or or take even them um, as for free. So um, so use them as well as an addition. So it's more about that. How do you combine them? So most of the pictures can be yours, and then you find some colorful or some pictures that match to your company colors, and then you can add them in and. Uh, so it's a mix and match exercise as well, but try to keep it as a kind of a matching collection of, of the pictures. Um, over here, you can see our website. It's a 
in beta version. So um, sorry for not having it totally yet ready. Uh, we are very much in the beginning of our, our journey also in, in this sense. And, uh, but if you have any questions, feel free to call or, or contact me or Marika and uh, happy to, to help you out. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to mention here is that uh, sometimes when you choose the photographer, it's not really about the, the photographer. It's also about how do you set up the scene, what's been done behind. And sometimes the uh, preparation work is even longer than just shooting the or, or just taking the photos. So it's a combination of both. It's never separate in a way. And um, and by using a little bit time, energy and, and money as well into the pre-planning and also thinking that what are the angles, what are the products, what, what else can you add there? You will have a, such a kind of like a better um, photo shoot session. So um, that would be our recommendation. Um, so by that, I would like to thank you. And I noticed that I have been so much quicker than, than Jaakko. <laughs> so so uh, uh, this business story is always a lot quicker than, um, than telling a story like, like, like Jaakko did. But so if you have any, have any questions, happy to ask, uh, answer. And, uh, and also Marika is here if you want to ask any questions um, of any of the background. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Hanna. Uh, thank you very, very much for this amazing presentation. Um, a lot of information, new information for me and interesting tips. And yeah, you answered, give uh, the answers to my question. Uh, so uh, let's see if we will have questions from the audience. And as I mentioned, if somebody would like to ask uh, the question by voice, we can invite you to the stage. So, uh, Ina, thank you very much for the pictures and uh, thank you, Lap and Lohi, for the, uh, giving permission to use uh, your case. Um, so, um, there is comment from Inger. Uh, thank you, Jaco, for interesting stories and fantastic photos. And thank you, Hanna. This was really important knowledge to companies. Yes, I completely agree. I believe that our uh, support program companies can use this uh, information uh, because we are now actually on a stage that uh, uh, we are finalizing the story and then we will uh, move to the uh, visualizing, uh, visualization and uh, digitalizing. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so, many, so many comments. So uh, thank you. Very good tips and very nice photos. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I took a lot of notes. Thank you, Hanna. This is from, from Petla, one of, one of our company. Uh, thank you, Lapia is near our free time house. Yeah, and here I must comment now for, for Ritva. So hopefully uh, you can visit Lapia next summer because all of their food or, or the restaurant products are going to be uh, renewed. So. Um, we hope that it will become like a summer restaurant. So that would be great also for the people who have their free time houses around. <laughs> this is a tip actually for all of us. <laughs> we can go to visit the place. Uh, from Miriam, thank you for inspiring stories and photos. Thank you, Miriam, for your comment. Um, there is more messages is coming. Yeah, uh, so, but uh, no, any question by now? Uh, well, actually, me, myself, I also don't have any question. Because, oh, yeah, here we have one question. Oh, How would you apply this knowledge to storytelling of municipality? Um, this is actually something that we have kind of maybe a little bit touched base already with Ina. So um, how do you tell the... Uh, how do you describe the atmosphere of certain area and um, and what are the elements that you want to add there? What are the, once again, the feelings that you want to add there? And uh, and for instance, for, for me personally, when I drive through uh, Toronto River Valley and uh, 
what I pay attention is is all of these um, lato, all of these farmhouses or or these older buildings, and uh, I feel strongly that I would love to stop by to watch all of them, take pictures of them, and I'm always too busy to do that. So maybe there are things that from the municipality point of view, for instance, that if you have um, certain kind of a tradition or traditional buildings or um, once again, the landscapes, um, you'll be actually adding them. And what are the ordinary people doing there? What are their hobbies? And this is going back to uh, some of the other comments earlier where uh, bring the local living alive, like Jaakko did. So use the people as an example that Lisa here has been doing this and that for, for a long time. And this is her favorite spot. So bring the people telling their favorite spots in the municipality, for instance, that would be probably one of the really good elements. Um, using the, the scenery, but not just the nature scenery as such, but once again, maybe with the people that maybe a, a family who every, every Sunday goes for a walk, that this is their favorite spot. So bringing it um, kind of tangible that who goes there, why would they go there? What are they doing? So, so maybe maybe that's that's one of the ideas that I would be using for a municipality in storytelling. Hmm. Yeah, it's, what uh, is Jaakko saying? Good... <laughs> <laughs> Jaakko, you still can you still uh, can um, yeah open your camera and microphone and you would like to comment something. Hmm. <laughs> No, I think this is this is uh, nice to see this uh, Hannah's presentation, uh, uh, and I feel like this this is very very uh, good good combination. This this more more practical. I am more <laughs> more there something to on on some something else and uh, <clears throat> and and, and uh, but it, it was nice to see and, and uh, thank you Hannah, thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, Jaakko. <laughs> Thanks, uh, both of you. I believe that probably uh, our companies are um, um, using knowledge and information from your uh, presentations, both the presentation exactly just mixing. So maybe uh, the results would be uh, awesome. Uh, there is comment from Ina. Uh, Jaakko, you were on our roots. <laughs> Uh, Ina, would you like to uh, would you like to go on stage and? <laughs> <laughs> now we are exposing her. Um, okay. This was not this was not agreed. So sorry, Ina. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> too bad. Uh, okay, let's uh, wait a little bit if uh, there will be more questions or comments. But I, I have um, to comment here because not sure. everybody on the on the um, on the meeting knows or in the in the webinar knows. So Ina is Jaakko's uh, student, so there is a connection here. So Jaakko has been teaching Ina in photographing, and um, we have been working together with Ina first in the original Lapland uh, project two years ago. And uh, now, very recently, also taking pictures at Lappea. <laughs> so, so, just Ina, as a background. <laughs> yeah, Ina is a student, uh, Yako student, and you have been using Ina's photos. So, actually, you have been using Yako's photos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, they are Ina's, Ina's photos. They are Ina's, no. they are Ina's, yeah, Ina yeah. has her own style. And, oh, yeah. and especially yeah, these Ladot. Yeah. Yeah, Ladot. Ina has nice style, Ina, yeah. really nice style. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and actually, Ina was in our project at the beginning. Yeah, but we are still uh, cooperating. Behind awesome. Winxalan. Okay. Uh, who would like to translate it to to our audience who does not understand Finnish? <laughs> Just a bit crazy, or. Okay. Uh, not tweaked. Uh, what is it in <laughs> in English? A bit crazy. Mm. Yeah. Um, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so uh, no question anymore, but uh, I would like to uh, thank you again that you joined the webinar and share your experience and uh, your knowledge with us and with our audience. And um, yeah, we have finished, we're finishing a little bit early, but uh, I think we have got enough of information and uh, thoughts uh, that we could utilize uh, in storytelling. And um, for, uh, for the audience, as I mentioned before, the recording will be uh, sent to you right after uh, the webinar ends, so you can watch it again. And if you have any question, you can contact uh, uh, me, uh, our project, or Hanna or Jako. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much. Um, have a nice day or evening, I would say. <laughs> and see you uh, see you on our see you on our next webinar thank you thanks all bye thank you very much bye -bye. thank you mm. bye